Right now at noon, more rain possible. Communities all across Wisconsin are preparing for more flooding. New details today concerning a deadly bus crash in New Mexico, what police believe is to blame. Plus, paying their respects to the Queen of Soul. Join us as we honor music icon Aretha Franklin as she's laid to rest. This is News 3 at Noon. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for tuning in to News 3 on this Friday afternoon. We'll get to those stories in a bit. But first, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Chris Reese has a look at your first alert forecast. Badger home opener tonight against your alma mater. That's right, Western Kentucky University. Looks dry maybe at the beginning of the game? It does look dry for now. So, of course, we'll give you all the highlights on that. But we are tracking yet another alert day in our forecast, Mark. That's not only for tonight, but that goes into your Saturday as well. We are tracking the potential for not only some strong to severe thunderstorms, but some heavy rainfall as well. So we are keeping an eye on that. Most of the severe weather will kind of be in the western tier of the state and back to the south south across portions of Iowa. But of course, we do have that marginal risk for some strong to severe thunderstorms here in Madison, really throughout the entire state of Wisconsin. We'll keep an eye out on that. The heavy rain potential is there as well. So we do have some flash flood watches to our north. That's going to go from tonight through Saturday night. We'll keep a close eye on those. But right now we are high and dry around here. Blue sky, those high decorative wispy clouds are showing up as well. The temperature right now 76 degrees we'll watch our temperatures warm up to about 78 as we go into the afternoon and then cool off and they'll study out in the low 70s and upper 60s but the one lone shower we're tracking in wisconsin nonetheless it's a severe thunderstorm but that is up just to the south and west of eau claire that just moved out of minnesota at the moment but we're all watching the sky with the home opener tonight for the badgers of course i'll have the full game forecast coming up when we come back uh, to weather. What, what's minutes. the mascot? Our mascot is the Western Kentucky University Hilltopper. His name is Big Red. Big Red against Big Red. Yep. All right. It'll be interesting. <laughs> we'll see you in a few minutes, Chris. Thank you. There are at least 25 people out of their homes across Sauk County this morning. The towns of Rock Spring and North Freedom are seeing 10 to 20 feet of water overflowing from the Baraboo River. The National Guard will be back in North Freedom today, filling sandbags for people threatened by the rising water. Many areas are inaccessible and others are already submerged. Governor Walker will take uh, talk about flooding in Sauk County, speaking from the Baraboo City Hall this afternoon. The governor was in Fond du Lac County yesterday to tour damage there. The National Weather Service now says 15 confirmed tornadoes touched down Tuesday across the state. The most powerful was an EF2 tornado in Brownsville. That's about 13 miles south of Fond du Lac in Dodge County. There are chances of rain across southern Wisconsin throughout the next week, as Chris mentioned. So the concerns over flooding on the isthmus are not yet over. In an effort to keep water levels down on Lake Mendota, city engineers have been opening Tenney Dam. And Mayor Paul Soglin says that may need to continue. Releasing water from the dam means higher levels in the Yahara and flooding on the Near East Side. Mayor Soglin says roads like East Washington and First Street will likely have lane closures and part of East Livingston will be closed as well. People are asked to stay away from a popular Dane County Park because of flood damage. The flooding tore trees out of the ground and destroyed bridges in Pheasant Branch Conservancy. Over 250 trees were also lost in the area. The city of Middleton estimates the damage to the conservancy was about two and a half million dollars. That money expected to come from the city, the county and grants and potentially federal emergency aid. Crews who worked down south after Hurricane Katrina are there this week pulling out down trees so they don't dam up the river. Traffic on a Badger game day, always an issue, but the flooding and construction that made move-in day more difficult this week will make getting to Camp Randall challenging this evening. UW police say drivers could need an extra hour to get to the game. There's flooding on the east side of the Isthmus and Monroe Street down to one lane heading in town from the west. That means you'll have to weave through neighborhoods to go back in that direction after the game. We have some helpful links for planning your drive on channel3000.com. Mexico is open again following a deadly crash between a bus and a semi. At least seven people died and more than 40 others were hurt during yesterday's crash. Police suspect a blown tire caused the truck driver to swerve onto oncoming traffic. It was not stopped. There wasn't enough ambulances there to 
get everybody out. There's people that were stuck in the bus trying to get out, screams from inside there. It was horrifying. Like, I've never actually seen in my life a bus look like a ripped open sardine can. Debris from the crash was removed from the road overnight. However, it still litters part of a nearby field. The bus was headed from St. Louis to Los Angeles. The crash happened two hours after a stop in Albuquerque. This is the second deadly bus crash in New Mexico this summer. Arizona Senator John McCain is back on Capitol Hill, the place he's called his office since 1981. There'll be a ceremony with congressional and military leaders to celebrate his legacy, followed by a public viewing today. This is the last chance for the public to say goodbye to Senator McCain. Tomorrow morning, the senator will be driven to the Vietnam Memorial for a short ceremony before his memorial service at the Washington National Cathedral. Senator McCain is the 31st person to lie in state at the Capitol Rotunda. It's an honor reserved for government officials and military officers. Thousands of people are in Detroit today to pay their final respects to Aretha Franklin, the Queen of Soul. Organizers insist the eight-hour event will be a service and not a show. Guests and presenters include former President Bill Clinton, Smokey Robinson, Stevie Wonder, and others. Kenneth Craig has more from Detroit. Aretha Franklin got the red carpet treatment one final time as her casket arrived at Detroit's Greater Grace Temple. A line of pink Cadillacs lined the street outside the church, a nod to lyrics in Freeway of Love, one of Franklin's greatest hits. 18 performers and more than 15 speakers are honoring the Queen of Soul during what's expected to be an eight hour long star studded celebration of her life. This is not the Grammys, this is not the Oscars, this is church. And we're going to send her out just like she came in. Today's funeral caps almost a week of tributes here in Detroit to the 18-time Grammy Award winner. A who's who list of Franklin's contemporaries came to pay their respects. I feel so good feeling all of this love that her music has brought to the world. And we'll have her music forever, and her spirit will live on. You gotta give her the respect and give her the credit of bringing such a wonderful sound to all of us. Sabria Hakim waited in line since Thursday afternoon after hearing some fans would be allowed inside the church for what originally was an invitation only event. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I am so sleepy, but it was worth it. This is a, a historical event and I am so glad to be a part of this. A send-off befitting of a queen. Kenneth Craig for WISC News 3. And Franklin was dressed in a sparkling full-length gold dress with sequined heels for her final outfit. She had several costume changes during her viewings leading to today's funeral. Franklin died August 16th from pancreatic cancer. She was 76 years old. Hey!
The unofficial end of summer might be here, but that doesn't mean we're willing to give up those fresh tasting favorites that we fell in love with over the last few months. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna hang on to my favorite summertime fruit salad and turn it into my new anytime fruit salad. To make it, we add a bunch of fresh mint to a blender along with some rum, lime juice, sugar, and a bit of warm water. And we'll give it a whirl. Once it's smooth, we can pour this over anything from fresh cut melons to a bowl of mixed berries. How about a combination of the two? After it sits in the fridge for a bit and all the flavors come together, it's ready to serve. If you're thinking, boy, that looks easy, I could make that in no time, you are right. But don't let how simple it is fool you. It's really good and worthy of two thumbs up. To get the recipe for our mojito fruit salad, simply visit our website. I'm Howard with Kelly in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found a fun, fresh, and fruity way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. Mm. All right, Howard, thank you. Coming up, rain is possible tonight for the Badgers home opener. Your game day forecast coming up next. Our call for action phone bank is open right now, ready to take on your consumer issues. Call our hotline. Volunteers will help you with any consumer complaints. The number is 608-270-2833. The service is open every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday between 11 and 1. Well, Coca-Cola takes on the coffee industry and what Americans would give up to get out of debt. Here's Diane King-Hall with today's Money Watch report. Wall Street is keeping a close watch on the latest jabs in the trade war between the U.S. and China. Investors are concerned about a rise in rhetoric from the two nations, so stocks started the session lower on the last trading day of the month. 
Millions of Americans will hit the road and take to the air this holiday weekend. AAA is predicting up to 35 million people will travel at least 50 miles, with more than 16 million Americans taking flights. Airline industry trackers are expecting today will be one of the busiest travel days of the year. A Java jolt for Coca-Cola, the beverage giant says it is buying the British coffee chain Costa Coffee for more than $5 billion. The deal gives Coca-Cola a broad brick and mortar footprint, clearing a path to take on Starbucks. Costa also sells coffee in gas stations and grocery stores. And a new survey from my bank tracker shows three and a half million Americans would choose jail over paying down their debt. Other options people would consider to wipe out debt include giving up freedom of speech, religious freedom, and the right to data privacy. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the New York Stock Exchange, I'm Diane King-Hall. Thank you, Diane. The Dow Industrial is down at 93 points at the noon hour. The Nasdaq, however, up seven. Q106 Farm Director Pam Yonke out of the radio barn today, so here are your farm numbers. This is here now, big holiday weekend approaching, and it looks like it could get wet. It looks like it could be that way. So we do have an alert day, of course, once again, not only tracking heavy rain, but the chance for some strong thunderstorms coming into the picture as well. Let's go ahead and show you guys where some of that greatest risk for strong thunderstorms are. The areas in the yellow, so that's mainly south and west of us right here in Madison. That's a slight risk for some strong to severe thunderstorms, and that's further across southwestern Wisconsin. All the way into Iowa, but in the green, we do have a marginal risk. That's a level one out of five, and that does include us right here in Madison. So, of course, we're going to be keeping a look on that in terms of any severe thunderstorms. And of course, that is all the fresh thing on our mind right now. After 16 tornadoes have been confirmed from Tuesday across the state, most of these tornadoes did shape up anywhere from about the Marquette County line all the way back through Sheboygan. We even had one strong EF2 tornado that was on the Dodge and Fond du Lac County line just to the north of Brownsville. You had some of your peak winds right around 125 miles per hour once that came on through. But other than that, the other thing that we are talking is the possibility of heavy rain. Once again, the models all kind of zoning in on a one to three inch rain over the next 48 to 72 hours. But some of them are coming in well above that. The NAM model spitting out greater than five inches of rain over the next three days. So we will keep a very close eye on it. But nonetheless, we do have flash flood watches in effect, mainly north and east of Madison. That's going to go Friday night through Saturday night. I'll be curious to see if any of these get expanded or moved further to the south. Now, we are tracking any showers or thunderstorms in the Madison area as of now. There have been some showers up uh, near the Twin Cities. That was severe earlier, but that's since fallen apart. Most of the action has been across the state of Missouri so far today, but right now we're going to keep our attention turned to what's back across the northern plains as that's what has the potential to impact our weather later on tonight. Temperatures are in the 70s right now, 76 here in Madison. You'll notice some cloud cover starting to filter its way in, but there are a lot of clear spots as well, and that's why we're not really expecting much rain. So if you're going to watch the Hilltoppers take on the Badgers later on today, uh, expect some cloud cover around, but we should be dry. Temperatures will be into the 70s. Those rain chances will come back into the picture as we get 
you into the overnight hours and into tomorrow. And that's not the only rain chance. We'll have more of those rain chances going through the weekend as well. And nonetheless, those could put down uh, some hefty rainfall totals. We're looking at maybe one to two inches from this one. Another inch or two with around Saturday night into Sunday. Another inch or two as we go into Monday. That adds up all of those little nickel and dime rainfall events. So, of course, we're going to watch that. But we are staying dry this afternoon. Temperatures topping out into the upper 70s. Your alert day tonight and into your Saturday morning. But we're keeping those rain chances around uh, for several days in our forecast mark simply because we're in a pattern that is loaded with rain chance after rain chance after rain chance. And you know, we've had so much rain lately. We really don't need any. We want extended periods yeah. of dry weather. All right, we'll keep an eye on things. Thank you, Chris. My we'll, pleasure. Be, we'll be right back. News 3. Well, environmentalists have been fighting to cut the use of plastic straws and bags for years. Now they're also focusing on balloons because they say they're a threat to wildlife. The movement has reached Clemson University, which for decades has started every home football game with its iconic balloon release. Mark Strassman reports. Clemson's pregame ceremony, which includes releasing 10,000 balloons, has been called the most exciting 25 seconds in college football. But then gravity kicks in. What goes up must come down. People wouldn't litter something on the ground, but then they might not think twice about letting a balloon go in the air. Danielle Vosberg co-founded the nonprofit Balloons Blow. She considers balloons litter and a threat to wildlife. They're just releasing them by the thousands. Vosberg has targeted Clemson and the University of Nebraska, which has its own balloon tradition. She rented this billboard in Lincoln, urging the school to end it. She started cleaning Florida beaches as a kid and says she finds balloons that sailed hundreds of miles. And how often do you find balloons? 
Most of the time. Vosberg rejects the yes. industry's yep. argument that latex um, balloons are biodegradable. In her backyard shed, she has stored six years' worth of balloons cleaned off nearby beaches. Animals like sea turtles and wild birds sometimes mistake balloon fragments for food. Environmentalists in the balloon industry disagree whether that threat can be fatal to wildlife. There's debate over how long they take to break down, but they are, in fact, biodegradable. Lorna O'Hara is executive director of the Balloon Council. We don't dispute that they sometimes find balloon fragments, but when they open them up, there can be anywhere between five and 25 things in their stomachs. Do you understand why there is pressure to remove balloons as a potential threat? Yes, but we would like to see people's behavior changed. We're discouraging balloon releases, uh, but we prefer education over legislation. We reached out to the University of Nebraska. They told us their balloons are biodegradable and they use only paper strings. As for Clemson, they plan to replace balloons with an even bigger fireworks show all season long. Mark Strassman, CBS News, Clemson, South Carolina. Releasing balloons in large numbers is illegal in five states. No word on weather balloons. I don't think they're covered in this. I don't, well, we need weather balloons. Right. They get all the data for mm -hmm. us. And nonetheless, we need that data to give you an accurate forecast. We are tracking more rain chances going through the weekend. An alert day for storms and heavy rain overnight tonight and into Saturday. We'll watch those rain chances all weekend long. All right. Thank you, Chris. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have yourselves a great afternoon.